the freak out factor is real, right? I have a daughter. I'm worried about the world she's going to inherit. That world is just now coming to terms with its plastic addiction. The scope is so large, it's hard to get our arms around. One critical part of it is this. Researchers are now discovering tiny pieces of plastic in the seafood we eat. New Center's Lindsay Mills explores the problem and shows us how the coast of Maine may just hold a solution. Pat and Amanda, Maine kelp farmers and researchers are working to confront the issue of plastic pollution together, and they're discovering hopeful results from an abundant, sustainable resource. It's in clothing that we wear. It's in packaging that wraps our food, that we buy our toothbrush in. It's our toothbrush is made out of plastic. It is really everywhere around us. Susan Faraday is an assistant professor of marine affairs at UNE. She's sounding the alarm on microplastic, a new permanent pollutant created when plastic breaks down in the ocean. It can be invisible to the naked eye. I thought it was super cool that I could see it. Emily Hansen is a senior at UNE. There's really something that needs to be done about it. Last summer, she discovered a way to detect microplastics in the seafood we eat, specifically blue mussels. They all definitely had plastics, like there wasn't one that didn't have any. We've got this genie out of the bottle. Faraday says it's a problem that's not going to go away. The freak out factor is real, right? I have a daughter. I'm worried about the world she's going to inherit. And that's what brings us back to the coast of Maine, where a possible solution lurks in the water. What if instead of plastic, our grocery bags, our clothing, the things we use and consume were made out of something from the ocean? Kelp is proving to be a sustainable, traceable way to create alginate, which works like a fiber or yarn. For the last two years, the team at Sea Greens Farms has been trying to find a way to make alginate from Maine kelp. So you can make clothes, bags, uh, they made a sneaker out of it. It was on the cover of Forbes magazine. The so-called seaweed sneaker, the product of New York-based alginate. They are the ones who reached out to Sea Greens Farms for some kelp help. What's exciting is that they want to be able to trace where the kelp comes from. So that's where our company and the state of Maine comes in. We can trace every blade of kelp back to the farm and the body water that it came from. But there's another challenge they must solve. Most alginate is produced overseas by chemical companies, and it's a very, very acid intense process, right? Which isn't great for the environment. What they found is a new method using an enzymatic process. Which is essentially water. Securing the funding to do that is their next step. We think it's pretty exciting that the, the process exists now, and we'd like to, to bring it here. The ability to sell kelp for purposes other than food will increase its value. A win-win for local farmers and the planet. And there is just so much to talk about when it comes to microplastics. I know I still have a lot of questions. I want to hear your questions as well. We're going to be on Facebook Live in just a few minutes with Susan Faraday. So please join us and send us your questions on Facebook right now. And Pat and Amanda, kelp really is proving to be that sustainable resource for so many different things. At the London Marathon, they just used it as water packets instead of handing out paper cups that you know the runners drink from and then discard. Uh, little kelp packets that can dissolve or you can as, eat it. As the Brits really are saying, cool. brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay.